All right, we got the whole gang here so we can get started. Um, so first and foremost, my name is Angel Marie from All of the Above Podcast, and we are here with the gang from TTP, Truth Teller Productions. We have Robin Hood, Eso, and Air Jordan. Yes, man. <laughs> so to kick this off, I feel like you guys need to let us know what is Truth Teller Productions. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll, I'll take this one, gents. Um, Truth okay. Teller Productions is an independent music and production label. And so basically what we're offering ourselves and some other artists, you know, that we're interested in working in and that are, you know, interested in working with us as well, um, is just a different way of going about, of, about things um, in terms of working with, you know, a traditional label. So we just, we're, we're, we have a different mind state in terms of what we can offer, you know, artists in terms and also what they can offer us. So, you know, a lot of times with like big name labels, it's all about like the dollar, you know, it's all about the money. They control, you know, a lot. Um, and as a lot of, you know, independent artists know, you have more power and more control over your projects, who you're working with, producers, engineers, you know, different studios, different artists that you might want to, you know, work with. So with that, you know, we're in a position where we're able to offer that to other people and then start to, you know, look at artists and say, how else do you want to have your music, you know, play out? Are you looking at music placement, you know, for like different shows, you know, for commercials? How else are you trying to go about things as opposed to, I made 10 singles and I'm just throwing singles up, throwing up singles, you know, like, yeah. mm -hmm. are you gaining a following in different areas, different cities? How can you target, you know, those markets? And so ultimately it's helping artists like really find like a goal and helping them to plan as opposed to here's 20 K you as a young, you know, individual, maybe, you know, usually Brown or black, you get this money and it's like, Whoa, you go out, you buy jewelry, you know, listen, we all about, you know what I'm saying? We like the goodies. Well, we try to be crispy. Yeah, yeah. We, all, we, we like the goodies too, but it's all about, you know, making sense of your situation and working smarter and not harder, you know, pretty much. So in a, in a nutshell, you know, that's what TTP, Truth Teller Productions, represents. And I think it's all in the name, you know, Truth Teller. Like, we're going to be honest with you. We're going to keep it honest, open, and truthful. That's my acronym, hot. We're going to keep it hot. So we like to... Mm. To, you know, like I said, be up front. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and keep it real with artists because a lot of times labels, certain management, they don't really keep it real with artists and they don't mm -hmm. they don't really know which direction to take, which way to go. They're just trying to feed their families, you know? Yes, and that actually segues right into my next question because you already said a little bit about what TTP is all about. So can you let us know, how did you develop the name for Truth Teller Productions? You know what? It actually came from one of like the first songs that I ever wrote. Um, and it was over like a Kendrick Lamar beat. I mean, Kendrick Lamar didn't do the beat. Who did that beat East? You know, off the top of your head? J. Cole did the beat. Okay. So there you go. See? He didn't hesitate. He knew that, right? Okay. There you go. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You know, you got to have people there to bring us something to the table, Angela. You can't just be rolling with anybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, so and I said Angela, Angel. So, any, <laughs> right, right, right. So, anyway, um, so in that particular type of situation, um, I, I always like to be honest about what it is that I'm writing in my bars. So you have a lot of artists that write about stuff that they're not experiencing. They talk about money they don't have. They talk about cars they don't own. They talk about homes that, you know, they either don't own or, you know, whatever, because everybody's trying to keep up with the Joneses, you know, and it's like, oh, well, I got to keep up with this person because they got this. And we're coveting what everybody else has as opposed to being like, I, I like I get fake it till you make it. Been there, yeah. done that. But then there's also don't buy until you can afford. Yep. Can I chime in on that? Please. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's about um, you know making your life and what you do uh, come across as cool. I think a lot of people have a problem with being their actual self and making that um, making that interesting to people. A lot of people they kind of wanna fake like there's somebody and I think that puts them in a lot of situations especially like these guys who they're faking like they're drill people they're faking like they're doing this and doing that mm -hmm. then when something real hits them it's like whoa we didn't expect the situation but you know you can't live like that through your music you know so I right. guess we kind of represent that just being yourself and actually making that what people want to hear as opposed to that. a lot of power in the pen <laughs> with the world yeah. 
Yeah. A lot of people have been talking about that lately, too, especially, you know, with current passings of hip-hop artists. People are saying you need to watch what you say in your lyrics because you can be manifesting things over your own life that you don't realize. Mm-hmm. I, and if you do it, it, it the right everything. way, you can make it where it's not corny, you know? Yeah, I mean, I'm, 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 even, I'm even looking at, like, how we're labeling ourselves. Mm-hmm. Pop, smoke, yeah. P, you know, yeah. P, rock. You know what I'm saying? It's like those will be bars. You gotta too. move a certain way. Pop got smoke, P and B got rock. You know what I'm saying? Like you'll end up having yeah. like so what are we really putting out there? What are we saying? I know we're trying to be creative, but at the same time, we don't wanna just get this coin. We wanna like get this coin and be able to spend it. We wanna mm-hmm. live our lives, you know what I mean? We mm-hmm. can't just be out to like cut folks' throats and just be like, Well, I don't have it and they do, so I'm gonna go take that real quick. But we yeah. also have I think to be we need to yeah, I, I think we need to get this conception out of our head. Oh, my bad, my bad. No, I was just going to say, we also have to be mindful of what we put out there as well. You know, so with TTP, the image is about selling positivity. You know, everybody wants to keep it crispy. You know, we're all about that. But like I said, you know, we want to make it make sense because, you know, you ain't trying to owe the man. You know, you want to be in control of what you have and who you are. And, you know, so... Yeah. Go ahead, cuz. I think we, no, I was just gonna say I think we gotta get this uh idea out of our head that positive means corny. Yeah. Like that's it's not the same thing. Like if you like I've heard some positive corny people, don't get me wrong. We're not that. <laughs> like we're coming with bars, we're coming with some shit you're gonna love. Right. Some shit you can play in the club and play right. in your airpods, you know what I mean? For sure. To, so, Especially yeah. in the black community, it's it's tough. It's like you gotta fight so many different obstacles to get somewhere. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, when it comes to TTP, do you guys plan on expanding and adding more people to your roster, more producers, more artists? What is that looking like? And if so, how can people inquire about joining the team? You know what? It's so funny because uh, me and my guys, we were just having lunch at the pool. The Ooh, mere fact that we can, just, me. we can just say that <laughs> shit. Like, we're just, you know, right. hanging out at the pool, you know, in LA, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, we were just talking about um the possibility of just kind of like we're already working with other artists but really what that looks like Mm -hmm. um and so we're interested of course in branching out and working with certain artists but we are very particular we don't want to work with just any and everybody so again what do you bring into the table oh you got a specific sound lyrically you know you're inclined you're just crazy with the bars you know my guys are lyricists they write they make beats so off the gate we're dealing with triple threats so you got to yes. come with at least, like, a threat. You know what right. I mean? <laughs> so at least one. You know, good check. Let mm-hmm. me check. Got to excel somewhere. Come on. Like, yeah, so, right, right. He's just right there. But, you know, so it's that type of thing of I have to hold my guys to a standard. I need them to hold me to a standard. And any artist that we collaborate with, it's going to be the same thing, you know. So if you feel like you can handle this TTP conditioning and you're ready to get this work and get this bread, <laughs> then let's go. Hey, that's what you need. No yes men around you. You need people to tell you right from wrong and keep you on your toes. That's how you iron yeah, shot my heart. Iron. Absolutely. Now, I'm going to say shout out to Taylor May, shameless plug, because he is an amazing hey. producer out here. What's hey. good, fam? A lot of people are tuning in. I just want to say everybody that's on my IG live, I'm because I'm, I'm, I'm tapped in on, on both pages right now, go over to all of the above. We're live right now. True Teller hey, Production. Yeah. Tune in. Okay. We're all back. <laughs> And what kind of legacy and impact do you all hope that TTP will have on the culture and the community? Ish, you want to take that, my guy? Man, I just hope people look at this label as, uh, you know, cats that are really trying to start it, you know, get it out the mud and everything, try to be on some cash money or some no limit type of stuff. We're like, we're really trying to push it to the people. We're not trying to be fake. Uh, we trying to give everybody like a different idea and a different paradigm and a different practice of the way to do mm-hmm. things. A lot of these, like, you know, what Robin was saying, a lot of these record labels, they out to feed themselves, you know? You end up, okay, well, you're going to get my album out, but then you got to pay the mixers, and it's all coming out of your check, and you got to pay for the studio time, and you got to pay for the beats, and then you got to make, oh, and there's interest on top of that. So you got to pay your interest back, too. So by the, oh, and we want your master, and we want your publishing, and we want, it's like, <laughs> at the end of the day, it's, you don't have your soul and your art anymore. So, like, TTP... We done did everything from the ground up. We don't owe nobody. We don't need nobody. We got our own masters. We got our own public. <laughs> got our own beats. It's like, you can do it yourself. It's what Sway was telling Ye. It's like, why don't you just do it yourself? 
His dude chose Tyler. Yeah, now he figuring out. This is what Sway was telling Ye. Watch Sway was right. He just now figuring out those were the answers. <laughs> yes, yes. Now, we have to get in to know about you all as individuals. So, Robin Hood, I actually have interviewed you before. So, hopefully, some of our viewers are already familiar with your face. Yeah. But to give them a little refresher, you recently wrapped up season five of Showtime series The Shy and are currently uh, cleared for season six. I don't know if you guys started filming that just yet or not. I mean, you're no, busy. No, no, no. That, that will come in the new year, but it's coming. Okay, so soon, guys. Exactly. So, how has Dre impacted the shy, and how has your character evolved since the last season or over the last few seasons? Um, I think the character is has evolved and is continuing to evolve. You know, a lot of that is definitely like on the writers, just in terms of where they want to take the character. And my mm -hmm. job is just to be, you know, honest and communicate the truth of the text. You know, roll with the character, you know, and just change with the changes. So, you know, we start off with Dre in season three. She's getting married for the first time. Like, she's got, like, stepkids. It's like, what the <laughs> hell, you know? This is all new for her, but she's she's game for it, and she's down for it, and she loves Nina, um, who's, you know, beautifully played by Tyler Abercrombie. And then, you know, of course, we have uh, Keisha, <laughs> played by <laughs> Burgundy Baker, and then um, my guy Kev, played by Alex. So, you know, it's 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 a lot of love, you know. Um, I think that working with different actors that are interested in seeing, like, the overall family, you know, mm -hmm. evolve, they help to, you know, balance you out, like, when you're coming up with ideas and, you know, thoughts and all that good stuff. So, you know, it's been great. I love to see where Dre goes for, for season six. I've heard a couple of little things, you know. <laughs> um, but, you know, uh, I don't even know if the writer's room has started up just yet. So it's going to be really exciting for me to see what it is. And then really exciting to share it with, you know, the viewers. Like, it's been mad love. You know, you got shows can't get to a season two, let yeah. alone the season six. So it's a blessing. It's a blessing. And then we've been getting music on the show, too. So... You know, yes, again, congratulations. CCP. <laughs> CCP, let's go. Shout out to you guys. Yeah. And we uh, recently saw uh, on the last season of Power Book 4 Force, uh, you made a surprise cameo. <laughs> and we learned yeah, that you know, I had be to a slide. series regular as U.S. Attorney Stacey Mark. So congratulations Thank on you. that. I told y'all, this woman is booked and busy. Thank you. How does it feel to be a part of the Power franchise and the Power family? Yeah, it feels amazing. You know, it's it's super dope because coming from the shy, being able to be, you know, the U.S. attorney, um, you know, for, for for this this upcoming season, you know, on Power. It's just fantastic because she's totally different, you know, from Dre. So it'll be interesting to just see how viewers, you know, that are familiar with me on the shy, how they, you know, receive me. I'm hoping they receive me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's just been it's just been mad love in Chicago, period. You know, we shoot the shy in Chicago and Power Book Four Force was shooting in Chicago as well. So ah. I've been in Chicago for a minute. Chicago was like, stay, you know. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's 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 been a blessing. And I literally went from one show right to the next. We film on the same lot, you know, so I'm on set passing one poster like I'm in that. And then I'm seeing the other posts like, I'm in that too. You know, like, Blessings. God is good, you know? So, um, I yeah, love it's, that. It's, yeah, it's, it's great. And I'm all about being transformative. Um, versatility has always been a part of my brand. And so, with, again, with these two different characters, you'll see uh, probably still little aspects of Miriam, you know, because I'm the one who's transforming and bringing that, that, that honesty. <laughs> You know, but I'm a modern day griot. You know, I'm I'm here to tell stories. So you know, that's, <laughs> that's, that's what I'm doing for sure. So it's yes. been great. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna say it right now. I hope that you will not be like Cooper says, because I don't want to have to hate you now. All right. <laughs> I can't <laughs> I make any promises. Give up no juice, but I'm gonna just say that. I can't I hope make ain't any promises. Be coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> now, East O, time to switch it to you, good yes. sir. So you recently starred in the off-Broadway Pulitzer Prize winning play, Fat Ham. So congratulations are in order for that. So can you tell us a little bit about Fat Ham and your experiences? I mean, oh yeah, Fat Ham and your experiences during that time. Yes, I mean, Fat Ham, a brilliant play written by uh, my playwright, James Ahn from Philly. Um, hey. Philly's in the building. Two one five. 
Uh, it's a play about, um, it takes place at a cookout in the South. And it's about, um, it follows uh, this protagonist, Juicy, as he's dealing with the death of his father. Mm -hmm. And uh, just trying to, you know, write some generation, uh, write some generational curses, you know, trying to break them and, and uh, you know, kind of change the blood memory of what's been going on in his family to a more, you know, positive light and trying to show black people that we can we can reimagine a world that's more positive, that's more joyful, that's more loving, that's more forgiving, that's more inclusive for everybody. And right. it starts with we make the choice right now if we want to, but we all have to make that, that collective choice. And it's a beautiful thing. It was at the public, um, National Black Theater, my director, Sahim, uh, Ali, absolutely amazing, great man. My cast, fantastic. Marcel Spears carried everybody. We had Adriana Mitchell, we had Billy Jones, uh, Benja K. Thomas, Nikki Crawford, Calvin, Leon Smith. Everybody just lit the stage up every single night and just felt good to give somebody, an audience, 90 minutes to just breathe and laugh because the world is so messed up right now. So much death, there's so much negativity. Yep. People don't want to turn on the news. You know, every time you walk outside, somebody's getting licked, something's happening. So it felt good just to have some people come in and be like, laugh with us for 90 minutes, cry with us for 90 minutes, look at your fellow neighbor and be like, yo, man, like, I'm rooting for you, you know? Yes. Yes, man. Yeah. I love that. You know, like Robin Hood mentioned earlier, all of you guys are triple threats. So, Easto, being an actor, music producer, songwriter, how do you intertwine all of these assets into one to be such a successful creative? Man, it, it helps to have, you know, people that I'm looking up to right now, like Hood, you know? It, it helps to have people in your corner being like, oh, that person is doing that. You know, I can do it. Um, I roll with a bunch of creatives, so everybody in my crew is like, they writers, they actors, they directors, they producers, they do everything. Everybody is a quadruple threat, you know? So right. like you was, you know, like you were saying earlier, iron sharpens iron. I think it's just about, you know, breathing. And and one day I'm like, okay, I want to write a song today. I'm just going to go ham on a lady. Da, da, da. The next day, okay, I want to write a beat today. Da, da, da. The next day, I want to do a monologue today. And just like not stifling myself, you know? I feel like I have so much to offer the world. So it's just about making sure that my creative he never gets stagnated, making sure that I'm always breathing and believing and making sure that I'm always focusing on my craft. Here we go. I love it. <laughs> That's the way to do it. Yeah. Now we're going to flip it to the other man, the head man of TTP, Air Jordan. So you yeah, are actually the newest member of TTP. So what fresh mm -hmm. new take or quality have you added to the label so far? Well, let me say, I don't have the same acting background as my two label mates. <laughs> but... <laughs> Um, you know, I, I definitely, um, I think I bring my own flavor and uh, my own style of beats. And I think we mesh very well with the music, man. Like, especially um, especially in the Chi-Town area, a lot of people I meet, they don't, we don't mesh the same way that we do. And it's not to, you know, throw shade or anything, but it's, it's just a, a good vibe when we're all together. Um, you know, I started... I started when I was younger on like the dance scene in Chicago. I was making more dance music, but um, eventually I started making beats at like 12 years old. It's funny, one of the people who was making um, music with me back in the day, he's actually in the live right now watching. Shout out to my boy, Jilla. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, um, I started off real young. Um, I don't bring this up a lot, um, but like my first song I made was like with Kiki Palmer and like from that point on it was like her mom and the way they were they were like look you got to be on it and, and be on your shit and I and it kind of gave me a glimpse early on not to say we worked with each other after that or anything but it came a, a, gave me a glimpse early on of what the industry is and it had me focused you know and um you know I've just been making beats uh doing shows going to a lot of venues and luckily we linked up I was actually Oh, what happened, Robin? <laughs> yeah, uh, with another team before, <laughs> but you know, um, God kind of diverted my path from that team, which I love them still. Shout out to Celestia. But you know, um, God worked his magic and things ended up playing out a certain way. And now I'm on a team with my cousin on an independent label with my cousin. That's like that one is. of the best feelings in the world. One phone <laughs> is getting too hot, y'all. You, you, you're, you're killing it. You're killing it. You're, you're blowing up my phone. That's it's crazy. I wasn't even rapping. I wasn't even <laughs> rapping. <yet. laughs> the line got my phone on fire. Jeez. Anyway, I'm back. Continue, my my, my fam. Go ahead. 
Yeah, but now, you, um, you just said that you and Robin Hood are, are cousins. How does that feel to collaborate together, be a family? Do you feel like it makes the experience that much easier because you are family? Then you know yeah, each other? It's, How it's, that feel? It, it, it does. It's crazy because, let's get this straight. Like, me and Robin, we, like, since we've been little, we've always been cool, but we didn't grow up together. Like, she right. lives in Philadelphia. That's where my mom is from. And I'm from Chicago. So it wasn't like, you know, we were side by side with each other making music. And it right. it actually, you know what? I actually want to say it was, you know, rest in peace, my grandfather. It was um, at our grandfather's funeral that we kind of linked up and kind of shared each other's music. And she, you know, she started tapping in like, I really like what you're doing. And we got a lot of family. So it's like for us to be working together, I think it's a blessing because it's like it could have been anything going on and. We rocking and everything is well. Everything's well and everything's working. <laughs> right. I love that. And that kind of segues into my next question because you mentioned how you're from Chicago. Robin mm -hmm. is from Philly. East O, you're from Cali. So your team yeah. represents multiple coasts and sounds. Exactly. You being from Philly, <laughs> Chicago, flavor. and uh, Cali. So with East each East area East. having such a, like, you guys all have a distinct sound. So do you guys ever run into issues or... Uh, mixed views when it comes to producing songs and beats or do you guys find a way to mash those up because you know if you're from one area yeah. you're used to a particular sound how does that work mm -hmm. i think I we're all pretty versatile so i think can... we it's like yeah i would i would say like so basically when we started the collaborative kind of happened with my what east and myself and so it was this type of thing of he wasn't even making beats we were just going back and forth writing bars so i would write uh, two bars and i would send it to him just on some like homie shit like you know just with your homie and so he just believed in me from the gate so the beats came the it, the music came twofold so in one aspect it was like i want to make music that i'm not hearing on the radio mm -hmm. i want to hear some other stuff you know and so i started buying just industry beats and like doing freestyles over like you know just swiss beats like you know beats like that and stuff and so it's a variety, you know, it might be like Swiss beats, you know, it might be a murder beat, you know, it might be like a, a variety of different things. And that's how you also can show your versatility because different producers, like you said, are kind of creating beats sometimes from a specific place. Mm -hmm. So going back to what Cuz was just chiming in and saying, the versatility that we have, we're, we're, we have a collaborative, you know, um, an ensemble mentality, if you will. And so it's a matter of everybody has something to bring to the table. Um, for instance, when we did our track Vibin' um, featuring Scotty ATL, um, Air Jordan, and of course myself, everybody was in different places when they heard the beat. You know, E sent me the track. I'm thinking, oh, who would sound dope on this? Mm -hmm. And then I reached out to Scotty because we were starting to form a bond, you know, and then I sent it to, you know, to Jordan thinking, Jordan makes really dope ho like hooks. He's kind of really like melodic and everything, maybe this could be an opportunity to have all four of us, you know? Mm -hmm. And again, it's like, what are you bringing to the table? We set up a studio session in LA, you know, Scotty flies in from Atlanta. Jordan comes in, you know, from Chicago, East, always on the Zoom or whatever, you know what I mean? I, like or, I was there too. Oh yeah, matter of fact, yeah. So East is in the building as well. And everything kind of happened on, like in that day, like, Jordan came in, he had wrote the hook, he goes in, he sings the hook. I have my verse on deck. Scotty's writing his verse. And, mm -hmm. you know, so the song kind of came together in that moment. And here we got the South, we got the East, we got the West, we got the Midwest. All on this one track. Was no confusion, no conflict, you know, no conflict, yeah. nothing. It was mm -hmm. about just making <laughs> quality music, something we could vibe to. I know that's the right. title. Yeah, I think I we it. all sound like where we're from, but we're not like stuck with mm -hmm. that style. If that makes sense, it's like we all. I think that's why we mesh so well because we're all like, let's just say, versatile, and we are. Yeah, and allow one another to influence. You know, if 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 you're the only one that's bringing something to the table, it's like then how can you reciprocate what's being given to you and vice, you know, vice versa. So if everybody mm -hmm. is bringing something, it's like, oh, okay. It's like a buffet now. We got pickings. We can say, oh, well, let's rock. Well, we like this bar. Okay, well, let's go with this. You know, and then as an artist, you just need to make sure you're pushing to get credit and so forth. But at TTP, we don't have that issue because we respect the artists we work with. And, you know, it's it's just it's just a fact. That's how we, you know, go about things. So, you know, yeah. no, no surprises over here. 
Except I mean, for it's in a Miri experience. Versatility <laughs> is like the main ingredient for great collaboration. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, now, as yeah. we begin to wrap up, um, what, uh, where do you guys see TTP in the next five years? Oh my goodness! On every <laughs> billboard you pass, Man. on that every part. every TV show you watch, that every part. commercial is gonna have our jingles. Mm -hmm. that We're part. not playing. Like they say, you know, they say music submission. changes every five years. I want to be that new change. Like I want to be the new status quo. So that's what's up. Yeah, yeah. And how can everyone <laughs> tune in and follow TTP, Truth Teller Productions, stay up to date with everything that you guys have going on, or even to join the crew at some point or get some advice sure. from you guys? For sure. Well, definitely, they can always follow the IG. We just got it started. It's Truth Teller Productions. It's spelled how it sounds. We, we keep it, you know, actual, factual. Um, and then definitely tap into our individual pages and what we have, you know, going on. It's a lot of love you know, that has just been on this live, on my live before it got so hot, my phone, <laughs> you know, I had to put it down. <laughs> but, you know, follow, you know, um, Air Jordan, follow Easto on his page, you know, all of our info is right here. Follow all of the above, you know, tune into what they're doing. It's a lot of really mm -hmm. great stuff. I saw you just had Sinai Lathan, yes. you know, on the show. So Yale alum, you know, it's it's love. And I just, um, we're we're thankful for, this medium and we're thankful for other artists who show support and just before we jump off you know ttp is about giving that support mm -hmm. so you know we might just post up something that you're doing on our story it might not have anything to do with us but we're about showing the love because mm -hmm. why not you know i'm from the city of brotherly love so you know <laughs> it's about brotherly and sisterly love so it's about like how do we pass the torch how do we give back? You know, there's a lot of different ways to give back. It's not always, you know, monetary. So yeah. um, that's our main know? mission at All the Above. We always <laughs> want to support people and provide a platform. Absolutely. And I do want to say, Taylor May wanted to know: Are you guys offering any TTP merch? Oh, it's coming. Just talking you about it. coming. <laughs> I have a, a surprise coming. visitor for you, Robin. We Hood. need that surprise. What's up, little cousin? <laughs> that might be. That's going to be the next member of TTP. It looked like <laughs> she was about to have some dinner. <laughs> that's about say to be the next cousin. member of a, a TTP. We're going to get him a, we we get him a TTP deal. TTP merch. TTP. Let's go. <laughs> that's now, what's up. What's up, family? I need to share a quick story with you, Robin Hood, before you go. Please. Please. It was this commercial that used to come on, I believe, probably two years ago at this point. And it was a uh -huh. Doritos commercial with a voiceover that would say, Fritos, Doritos, or something. That <laughs> voice sounded just like you. And I kept asking my husband, I was like, is that your cousin? I was like, I swear that got to be her. And you was always doing voiceovers and other things, but we looked it up. It wasn't you. But I was like, It wasn't yeah. me because I was, I was about to say, if time. somebody, if somebody's using my money, if, you know, using my voice, I need my Doritos. <laughs> I'm not right. complaining. I swear, if anybody knows the commercial I'm talking about, that, whoever's voice that is, I swear, I thought it was you. Every single time I hear, I'm like, that that gotta be her. They be trying to, they be trying to sound like me, yo. They be trying to mock mm -hmm. me, yo. No, they trying to, the flow I'm and everything. Man, you got a Hollywood voice. All the way. <laughs> no, I'm joking. It's a lot of talented people out here. I'm just thankful to be in the races, you know. And like I said, with my guys, with you, I'm thankful for, you know, all of it. So we just want to keep growing, keep building keep utilizing, you know, the opportunities that we have in front of us and keep, you know, working with dope people like yourself to get the word out, you know? Yes. Yeah, I would sure. say thank you guys so much for joining thank us. Do you, you. want to drop your uh, personal Instagrams for everybody? Please. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, East. Please follow at Chris Herbie Holland on Instagram, East Stowe. You already know. Put it in the box. You know, put it in the box. I'm going to put mine in the box, too. Follow Air okay. Jordan underscore official and that's h-e-i-r not a-i-r i, I want to get sued by michael jordan now. right <laughs> and, um, i put in the box follow at robin hood music um for everything that i'm doing in terms of music as well as the acting and of course you know follow truth teller productions you know we show the love back so you know let's let's make it happen together be so you know supportive collectively Yes, and for all of those who are a little yeah. slow for typing this that they put in the box, we also have all of their pages <laughs> typed on our page as well. If you look and see that flyer of our Instagram Live, that is where you can find everyone involved with Truth Teller Productions. And make sure you also follow their main page at Truth Teller Productions. I Angel. am your girl, Angel Marie, and we will see you guys next time. Peace. Thank you, guys.